Hello there, and welcome to a quick overview of the new hand pose tools that we'll be making into the latest version of the SteamVR Unity plugin. I made this system to solve the time-consuming issue of adding hand animations into your game for every object you want to pick up. To start out, let me demonstrate the functionality of these tools. When picking up physical objects, your in-game hands morph to poses holding objects. These rock-solid poses can be authored and tweaked right in the Unity editor for quick iteration as your game progresses. You can apply fancy effects on top of the poses such as additive per finger animation and dynamic grips, and multi-pose blending. These are the basics of what these tools can do. What makes them superior to built-in Unity animations is that, again, poses are authored right in the scene view, and complex behaviors can be stacked with the flick of a few switches. Next, I'll show you how to use the UI to author your own poses and add them to objects. To add hand poses to any object in your game, just add the SteamVR Skeleton Poser script to it. There are two main tabs in the Skeleton Poser script. The first is the Pose Editor, which is for creating and editing poses that will be saved as scriptable objects and can be used on this object or any other in the game. To preview the poses you're authoring, just click these hand icons to uh, enable and disable the hand previews in the scene. It's easiest to edit the poses when just one is enabled, but for some of the buttons in this tab to work you need both preview hands to be enabled. I like to keep the right hand enabled for working on poses because I'm right-handed. If you want to modify the skeleton, just open up the hierarchy underneath your interactable object and you can see this uh, VR glove skeleton has been added to it. You can go in and edit these bones and do whatever you want. In this case, maybe I'll move the thumb a little bit. Um, and there we go. We have edited our pose into something new. Um, now, if you want to make asymmetrical poses, if you have, say, an asymmetrical object, you can have a different pose for the right hand and left hand. For this grenade, though, we probably want the same pose for both hands. So we can copy that right hand modification we just made over onto the left hand with this button, copy right pose to left hand. We'll confirm, and now that thumb updates to match our right hand pose. Now if you disable these hands uh, in the scene, it will lose those changes you made, so you have to make sure to hit save pose. And now it's saved permanently to that scriptable object. To add more usable poses to an object or to create a new pose, hit this little plus button uh, and you'll see a new tab is created. Now, no pose is selected by default, and you can either select one from the project, or create a new pose. Let's create a new pose um, that is Grenade Demo. Well, grenade Demo. By default, the hands just go into this open position, which you can work off of. But in our case, since we're um, going to make a secondary pose for this grenade, we probably want it to be based off the grenade pose. To do that, we can press this Import Pose button and navigate over to the original grenade pose asset. Open that up and you can see it is immediately copied over onto our new poses skeleton. Make sure to save that. Now if we switch back and forth between these, we can see they're identical, so let's make some changes to the secondary pose. Enable our single hand. And maybe we can lift the index finger up a little bit. Straighten it out. That looks a little crooked. There we go. And there we go, a new pose authored. Now remember to copy your right hand changes over to the left hand, just like that. And now we have symmetrical poses in the secondary position. Now we can save the pose, and now when we switch back and forth, we can see that it updates and can compare the two. If for whatever reason you want to start from scratch, you can always select a reference pose and then reset to reference pose. So let's say we want to reset to the fist reference pose. Select it and then press the red Reset to Reference Pose button. This overwrites the pose, and yep, looks like it saved it, so we lost that old pose. 
Alright, now I've recreated this finger pointing pose. It's a good idea to make backups of really important poses if you're going to be editing them, because the work can be lost easily like that. Now underneath each of the hand icons you may have noticed all these options for finger movement. This is for additive animation where you want the skeletal system's um, individual finger animation to apply on top of the poses that you've created. By default this will be set to static, but there are three other options. Free would be if you do not want your pose to apply to that finger at all, and in that case it'll listen only to the skeletal system. Extend would be uh, the pose that the hand is in uh, will be the minimum grip of that finger. This will probably be the most common as poses are mainly going to be wrapping around objects. Uh, contract would be the opposite of extend where whatever uh, pose the finger is in in the authored pose will be the maximum extended value of the finger and it will only be allowed to uh, contract further towards a fist pose. I'm not sure when that one would be used, but we thought we should just add it, just in case. Now for holding onto the grenade, it's a pretty flexible object to hold. None of the fingers are uh, really important to be holding it in place, so we decided to allow extension on all of them. Now another property in this tab is the preview pose scale. This is for when you're going to be authoring poses for differently sized camera rigs, and we'll get to that later in this video. And that wraps up the pose editor. The next tab is the blending editor. Now this is what you will use if you wanted to create more complicated behaviors such as blending between multiple poses. To start, we want to hit this plus button to add a new blending behavior. We'll give it a name. Blend is a great name. Um, you can see you can enable and disable behaviors. Uh, they have an influence value where you can turn them off and on uh, with more of a ramp if you don't want to harshly enable and disable them during runtime. You have a pose that they will be blending to, which by default is the main pose, but since the main pose is the base, this won't do anything. Instead, we want to set this to Grenade Demo, uh, so it'll be blending to that pose where the finger's sticking up. Now for type, there are three different types. There is Manual, there is Analog Action, and there is Boolean Action. Manual is what you would use if you want this blending to be controlled by a script or uh, just set in the inspector right here with this value slider. Analog action lets you map uh, this blending behavior's weight to one of the analog actions in your project. In this case, we've got a squeeze action and a buggy throttle action, which is mapped to the trigger. Uh, smoothing speed lets you apply a little bit of smoothing to this. Zero means no smoothing. Anything above zero is going to be slow smoothing, getting faster and faster as the value goes up. An appropriate value would be somewhere between 10 and 30, maybe. Although, you may not want any smoothing at all since this is an analog action. The last type of blending behavior is the Boolean action. This is very similar to the analog action, except it can be mapped to a Boolean action in your project, such as a button press. In this behavior, the smoothing is probably a little bit more important, because if you don't have any smoothing, it's going to be an instant jump. As an example, let's map this blending behavior to the teleport button, and we can give it a smoothing speed of 10. Now the final option in every blending behavior is the mask. Anybody who's used um, Unity's humanoid animation system will find this UI very familiar. Those who haven't, it is pretty self-explanatory. If you do not use the mask, the blending behavior will be applied to the entire hand. If you do opt in for the mask, then you can select different parts of the hand. The green parts will have the blending behavior applied to them, the gray parts will not. In this case, since the only part of the hand affected by the behavior is the index finger, let's just uh, mask out everything except the index finger. And there we are. We have a simple blending behavior that will lerp to the finger extended pose. You can stack multiple blending behaviors on top of each other, and they will be applied in order. Using this, you can create some really cool, complicated, hand behaviors. Let's give this grenade a try and see how it works. And voila! As I press the teleport button, the finger lurks to an extended position. That's an example of creating some very simple pose blending. You can use this to create anything you can imagine. On this squishy ball, it's used to blend from a main holding pose which looks like this, to a squeezed pose, 
which looks like this, where the hand is intersecting with this uh, non-squeezed ball right here. If you correspond this to a squeezing animation on this object, which is driven by a blend shape in this case, you can get a nice uh, correlation between those two motions. You can see it's set up very similarly to our grenade with one main pose, one secondary pose, and one blending behavior to lurt between those based on this squeeze action. As a more in-depth example, let's look at creating a set of poses from scratch on a brand new object. So I have this uh, piece of beautiful game art, which has a little collider on it, but nothing else. To make this interactable and have uh, hand poses, first we're going to add a rigid body, we'll add the interactable script, and we will add the throwable script. Now we can um, change the attachment flags on the throwable script. Right now it's just parenting to the hand and turning on kinematic on the rigid body. We're going to uh, want this to be moved with physics, so we won't parent to the hand, we will snap on attach, and we will turn off gravity. These are the settings for your average, uh, fully physically realized interactable props in your game. You're also going to want to make sure the hide hand on attach uh, checkbox on the interactable is unchecked, because otherwise we won't be able to see our beautiful poses. Now that all the physics are set up, we will add the SteamVR Skeleton Poser script. By default, we have no poses, so let's start out by creating one. Go in the demo folder, let's call this pose Happy Pose. Now we've got a nice default open hand pose that we can work with. And there we go. A pretty okay authored pose for this smiley face object. Creating these poses is probably best left to an animator, which I am not. Now that we have this one pose, let's test it out in game. First, make sure to mirror the pose over and save it. Looks like we forgot to check the checkbox that tells SteamVR to hide this controller while we're holding onto the object. beautiful pose for holding our smiley little man. Now just for kicks, let's author a secondary pose and make a blend between them based on squeeze. If you don't feel like importing the pose into a blank second pose, you can also easily just duplicate a pose, calling it something like happy pose. Squeeze! Now we can create a new slot and drag our happy pose squeezed right into it. We have the exact same pose starting out. Now let's modify this a little bit and make it seem like the person has squeezed. And there you have it, a simple secondary pose. Copying those changes over to the left hand and saving it, and make sure we're ready to blend between the two. We'll create a very similar blending behavior, uh, this time called squeeze. And we will select the hat pose squeezed as a blend target. The type will be analog action, and the action will be squeeze. Now that this is all set up, we're ready to try it out in game. And you can see, when we squeeze the happy man, he moves a little bit. You can see this action is fully analog. I can squeeze as slowly or as quickly as I like, and I get all the values in between. Now it's time to explore the last kind of blending behavior, the manual type. This value can be set in the inspector, but that's really boring. It's way more fun to do it through code, and you can blend between poses in all sorts of different scenarios. Let's create a little simple script called Happy Blend. Once this compiles, we can open up Happy Blend and get coding. First of all, we need to use val.vr. Now we can have a SteamVR skeleton poser called poser. Start, we will say poser. Get component of your skeleton poser. Now, an update to modify the blend value of our blending behavior. It is as easy as saying poser dot set blending behavior value. Forget what we called it. Let's go check. It's called squeeze. Squeeze. And let's set its value to a sine wave of 
time. So it animates over time. I my 2 plus 0 0.5. Just get the range in the right spot. Now when we pick up our happy man, you can see we get this animated uh, blending over time. To finish things off, let's look at one more feature of the Skeleton Poser system. Lots of games are made at different scales for any number of reasons. What matters is your player may be scaled up or down. The poses are applied at runtime at whatever the player's scale is, which is great, but the pose authoring tools are done at normal scale by default. This will be a problem if you're making objects that should be interactable uh, at larger scales. So for example, let's take uh, one of these interactable cubes on this table over here. Duplicate it and I don't know, put it up in the air and make it not use gravity so it floats there so we can access it easily. Now, by default, it has this cube pose applied to it, which looks great. The hand wraps around it, no reason to think why it wouldn't work. But when we go to play, when we grab this cube, our hand is clearly floating around it. The pose is being applied as if we were normal scale, a cube scale, but the cube is a different scale from the player. What to do? Well, I've added an easy solution to this. Whatever your player's scale is going to be, you can add this preview pose scale multiplier. So in our case, our player scaled up three times, so we set this to three. Now we can see clearly what our pose will look like once the game is playing with the player at this scale. I've created this secondary cube pose that actually holds onto the cube at this scale. At normal scale, this would make no sense and it's just intersecting with the cube. But scaled up three times, it grabs this cube perfectly. Now that we've selected this pose instead of that other cube pose, when we play, the cube grab looks great. Matches up with the cube perfectly. So to recap, if you're building your game at a different scale, you just need to make sure you set this preview pose scale to that scale as you're authoring your poses. I hope this video helped you get started creating your own hand poses. Thanks for watching.